Mr. Trump is under fire, meanwhile, from by some Republican lawmakers after he appeared to compare the United States to Russia and so downplayed President Vladimir Putin's record of human rights violations. Do you respect Putin? I do respect him. Do you? But, well, Why? Well, I respect a lot of people, but that doesn't mean I'm going to get along with him. He's a leader of his country. Uh, I say it's better to get along with Russia than not. And if Russia helps us in the fight against ISIS, which is a major fight, and Islamic terrorism all over the world, right. major fight, that's a good thing. Will I get along with him? I have no idea. It's He's very a possible killer, I won't. Putin's a killer. A lot of killers. We've got a lot of killers. Well, you think our country's so innocent? You think our country's so innocent? I don't know of any government leaders that are killers in America. Well, take a look at what we've done, too. We've made a lot of mistakes. I've been against the war in Iraq from the beginning. Yeah, the mistakes are different we've then. A lot of mistakes, okay, but a lot of people were killed. So, a lot All of right. killers around, believe me. And former acting CIA director and CBS News senior security contributor Michael Morell joins me now with reaction to those comments from President Trump. And uh, Mike, thanks so much for being here. I, I wonder what you make of uh, what many are seeing as the moral equivalency struck by the president as it regards Russia and Vladimir Putin. So I think, Josh, two things um, struck me. The first is the the consequences of what he said. Um, and the consequences are that it, he, he's condoning um, what Putin is doing. Um, and that's a further green light to Putin to um, take on and even kill his political opponents um, and journalists who oppose him. So he's condoning that. that. That sends a bad signal. The other thing he's doing is he is calling killers, um, people who work for him, people in the military, people who conduct military operations overseas for the United States. He is calling them killers. Um, that will have a demoralizing effect. So that's, that's the first thing that struck me. The second thing that struck me was um, that his, his positive comments about Putin were bookended by comments um, of his advisors in, in, in just the opposite direction. So earlier in the week, um, his, his new UN ambassador, Nikki Haley, um, condemned what the Russians are doing in eastern Ukraine, stirring up the fighting again there in the last week or so. Um, she said the sanctions won't come off until, until that ends and until Russia gives back Crimea. And just yesterday, the vice president, uh, Mike Pence, um, said he was deeply troubled by what the Russians were doing um, in uh, eastern Ukraine. So um, it's an odd juxtaposition of the president and his advisors, Josh. As it regards Vladimir Putin, then, does it really matter what uh, people such as Ambassador Haley or Vice President Pence are saying? That's a, that, that's a great question, Josh, because, because Putin is an authoritarian, but because he believes power comes from one person, he will listen much more closely to what the President of the United States has to say than what his advisors have to say. So I think it's very important for the President in the next 24, 48 hours to come out and, and uh, denounce what the Russians are doing in eastern Ukraine and say that he is equally troubled by it um, and that the Russians will pay a price. Um, we'll see if that happens. We have waited months to hear something like that. Uh, nothing like it has come yet. Now, we also heard the vice president say that he felt the, the president may decide to ease sanctions uh, on Russia if they could help against the fight with ISIS. However, in that same interview, we also saw Iran discussed, uh, a country that the president called the number one terrorist state. Uh, I wonder now about the, the complexities here, uh, considering the relationship between Russia and Iran as well. So there is a close relationship between the two. Um, both countries uh, pose national security threats to the United States. Um, so I think you have to think really hard about um, using one of those, Russia, to undermine the other, Iran. Um, and the reason you have to think hard about it is because Putin won't do that for free. He will want something in exchange. He will want sanctions relief. He will want assurances that no more countries on his periphery will join NATO. Um, so he will ask for a high price. The other thing I'd say, Josh, is that um, the Obama administration tried this. They tried to cut a deal with Russia over Iran. That deal was support us on sanctions on the nuclear issue, and we will not put missile defense into Eastern Europe. 
Um, and we all know how that deal turned out. It turned out with Putin's invasion um, of Ukraine and the grabbing of Crimea. Where do you see uh, the future headed as it regards the nuclear deal with Iran? So the, this administration couldn't have been clearer about its opposition to that deal and its belief that it can come up with a better deal. Um, my personal view is that um, this, was, this was an outstanding deal. I remember reading the deal when it first came out, and I couldn't believe how much the Iranians had given up. Um, so i um, got to be a little careful here because we don't want to be the ones, right? We don't want to be the ones to drive the Iranians back to their nuclear program um, by tearing up the deal. I think we need to enforce it. Um, I think we could be enforcing it a little harder than we've been enforcing it. Um, but we got to be very careful in not sending the Iranians back down the road to a nuclear weapon. Mike Morell in Stanford, California. Mike, as always, we do appreciate it. You're welcome.